I'm commenting uh, on a lot of videos and I kind of just want to resolve this because I'm spending too much time on it and that is um, how difficult it really is not to come to any argument with the idea that you have the infallible true position. We almost always do that. Uh, human beings do it as part of human nature. We come to a particular situation and we know what we think before we begin to look at the situation and we want confirmation of what we thought when we began and we don't want people um, telling us that we don't know what we're talking about. Um, we don't want people telling us that we're biased or that we're not looking at the data uh, dispassionately or uh, we're looking at it skewed basically. And um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, so I could just get this out of my mind and um, do something productive. And it, basically confirmation bias. Um, I'm going to be taking some notes from a scientific, um, uh, New Scientist article, a uh, very recent one, and uh, from some other sources. But it's the tendency, confirmation bias, for people to favor information that, that they already thought was true or that to favor a hypothesis that they held at the beginning of an exchange. Um, now this can be a scientific exchange, it can be a cultural exchange, it can be just talking to someone over the back fence. It, it can, confirmation bias um, infiltrates a lot of what we do and it's partly because it's so hard to separate what you think might be true from what is objectively true. A philosopher, uh, Th Thomas Kuhn, who is very well known, talked a lot about this uh, in uh, one of his mm, really well known books, The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. He said that science creates paradigms and paradigms are theories of science that work within his idea of what he called normal science. So basically a paradigm is what members of a scientific community share and often they share it alone. They don't, it's something that is so specialized that it's hard for other people often if they don't have the time, the energy, the intelligence, and the inclination to figure out um, what's going on inside the normal science within a certain paradigm. Now, when something new is discovered, that is when problems can begin within the paradigm of normal science and a revolution is the only thing that will change that ingrained, entrenched science. But it's, as I said, it's not just in science. You find confirmation bias in a lot of areas of culture and society. And one of the most difficult things for a person to do is say, do, do I believe this because I have formed an opinion after looking at a lot of so resources and, and sources, and not just sources that agree with you, which is what confirmation bias tends to want to tell you to do, but sources that are on the other side as well, um, which is really difficult. I mean, one of the best strategies for figuring out if you have a confirmation bias um, is to try to argue the side that you're sure is wrong. And I know that puts people out of their comfort zone. It certainly puts me out of my comfort zone. But if I had to argue, if I have to argue both sides, which is what you have to do when you are taking debating courses at university, um, if you have to argue both sides, you're much more likely to come to a real conclusion, a rational conclusion, one based on a real weighing of the data. And as I said, it's not easy to do, and we are prone to grand illusions. We are prone to think we are right, and we find friends and form groups who hold our opinions. And it's not just in culture at large, but of course it is also in the scientific community. Um, so you don't have to think that right is one position or the other all the time. Sometimes. It just makes more sense to see both positions or try to see them from both angles because really that's the only way 
to move a, your ingrained opinion um, and to really start taking a bit of a look at the way the world is. Anyway, I'm, as I said, I'm doing this to try to stop myself from posting comments. Um, and it's in relation to the pro and anti um, pornography and prostitution that's been going around. Um, I, I can truly th say that I, I don't think I take a strong position, but I take the position that we ought to try to have a dialogue that isn't just based on insult and drama, but on thinking about what views we hold, how long we've held them, and what the other side is really trying to tell us. Anyway, that's my take, and I hope I'll stop posting comments. You guys take care.